Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, as promised, we have the episode six deals for this Friday. Um, and without further ado, let's jump right in and discuss and break down these stills. So to begin with, we're going to start with this particular photo, which is of Moraine, Lan and Loyal. Now, I think it's quite obvious what it is that they're discussing in this photo. Um, and I think that would be the quickest route to get to Faldara in their need of haste. And so I think this sort of map that they're all looking at would no doubt be kind of uh, a map of the way gates, uh, the quickest route to go to get to uh, Faldara. And of course, with Loyal being an Ogier and having created the race, who else and who better to kind of bring into the fold in their need of haste than an Ogier literally sitting on their doorstep with an open invitation. Now, of course, as you can see, quite clearly, Loyal is very much, I think, in his element. As we've seen in the fifth episode, he loves to talk, as we all know and expect. And so I think he is very much going over each of the plausible routes they can go through in the race to get to Faldara. Now, of course, what's interesting is which particular way gate they will be using to begin their journey from. Uh, and we all know from all the kind of teasers and everything we've gotten so far, it will be a way gate outside of Tarvalon. Um, and so what I believe is going to be happening is they're going to spend a small portion of time discussing that, getting the route set out. And of course, Loyal will be, as we all know, tagging along with the group now in their quest to get to Valdara because they, of course, need... Um, someone who knows the ways, someone who knows how to read the kind of signposts, even though it's not really signposts, in terms of which directions to go within the ways, because as we all know, the ways are absolutely pitch black. And so they definitely now need to bring along Loyal. And of course, Loyal is already kind of um, embroiled in the group now, because obviously he's met Rand and uh, Matt, I, I appreciate, yeah, and Matt. And it's kind of that instance of Tarvarinus where Rand, you know, gets to meet someone of importance that will be required along in their journey uh, in a later point, you know, case in point, you know, he literally just bumps into Loyal in the uh, library within the inn. And obviously that's kind of, what happens with these Tarvarin, something that he needs or is going to need will just kind of magically bring into their kind of vicinity and that's what happened with Loyal. And so he's already kind of, in a sense, naturally and unnaturally involved with the group now. Moving away from that photo, we're now going to look at this photo of uh, Egreen, Perrin and Moraine. Now, as I said in the video a little bit earlier of the teaser, I had no doubt that the shots we saw of Perrin and Egreen were there, with them inside of the city of Tarvalon. And I was kind of unsure as to perhaps were they in the White Tower or were they in kind of like a city or uh, building within Tarvalon and I think kind of seeing all the stills we've gotten in this uh, photo kind of dump and the teaser from earlier where we see Moraine kind of looking out at one of the streets I think it's quite clear for us all now to see that they are definitely not in the White Tower at least to begin with is my assumption in this scene I think this is kind of a an inn or a building that a Green and Perrin make their way in to when they, you know, finally, after escaping from the White Cloaks, thanks to the help of the wolves, and then Moraine and Land will now kind of go and visit them. That's what I presume is what's going to be happening here. Now, obviously, it's very interesting, and I would say at this point in time in this photo, Moraine has already healed Perrin of his wounds inflicted on him by Eamon Fowler in the fifth episode. Um, and now, of course, as we all know, 
when using weaves to heal someone, a lot of the kind of process, if you want to call it that, comes from the person being healed. And so the strength of Perrin is being used here to heal him. So, of course, that comes at an expense of him becoming kind of exhausted and tired. And so he's just kind of... Um, recuperating, recovering from his ordeal and he's sleeping and of course we can quite clearly see uh, Ed Green is very much um, worried and looking out for her friend from the two rivers and of course Moraine will kind of be I'm guessing wanting to know what happened with them, where they've been, who they've met up with and of course kind of get the lowdown on um, what the White Cloaks did to them. And of course, as you all remember in the fifth episode, Ed Green stole um, Valder's kind of six to seven air sedai rings, which I'm sure she will give back to Maureen, I would presume, in this kind of scene in the uh, episode. And so uh, I'm kind of guessing and surmising that they probably are speaking along the lines of something to do with that. Now, up next, this is quite... An interesting photo here uh, and it's obviously of Matt with the Shadalagoth dagger um, and you can quite clearly see he's very much agitated he's very suspicious of whoever it is he is pointing this dagger towards I would not be at all surprised or shocked to find that on kind on the kind of other end of where he's pointing his dagger is most likely going to be Moraine who's just trying to get like a, a better look and feel of what's happened to uh, Matt and of course in the scene she will now no doubt finally see after all the time and telling them or land telling uh, the group not to pick up anything in the city what did Matt go and do other than the typical kind of Matt thing which is go and pick up a dagger in Shadow Lagoff and lo and behold we know what happens to him and so I think this scene is just kind of Maureen coming in, trying to see and get a feel of how he is, maybe even potentially try to heal him on her own to begin with, and then finding out kind of the taint or kind of just the amount of time he spent with the dagger is far too great for just one air sedai to be able to heal uh, Matt. And so maybe in this moment, as we can kind of remember in the books, she's trying to bring him into the White Tower. But as we all know, Matt is very hostile in those scenes. And of course, it looks to be very much the case in the show as well. Um, now, whether this has anything to do with Rand uh, getting uh, Tam's sword, which is now his sword, kind of out, I really don't know because obviously in the fifth episode they also promised one another that they would protect each other and make sure neither of them would end up in the situation that Loghain was in when they saw him paraded through the city. So yeah, then there's that. Now, this photo that I'm going to show you all next, I think is one of those ones which I feel everybody is kind of going to be the most excited for because as we all know it's our first look at a young Shuan Sanche and of course straight away the first thing that I kind of noticed in this photo was even from such a young age as she is now in this uh, scene we're going to no doubt be watching in the show of a young Shuan she already has those tattoos already kind of throughout her body and so it feels to me this is a sort of I would say um, what's the best way of putting this something that people in Tia and maybe to do with um, the fishmongers or the fishermen they, that they um, kind of do with their children because I cannot think of why you would have such a young uh, child absolutely kind of tatted up especially across her chest so that's really interesting to see and of course as I mentioned kind of the family and her father being a fisherman they're in literally striking distance of the river and no doubt they're being fishing I would presume at this point in time uh, and what's really interesting is they're looking out towards a group or people or persons now what I think 
going back to the teaser a little bit earlier and then putting it into conjunction with this photo, I think they may be looking at a mob of people coming to them and kind of burning potentially where they live down because maybe Sharon has inadvertently channeled and maybe in that you know particular portion of tier people aren't very used to seeing uh, channelers um, or you know people that can wield the one power and so there's something they don't like and they try to burn where they are down I don't know it's just something that kind of stuck in my mind where you can put two and two together in this particular situation and I could be completely wrong, I could be completely right, or partially right. We'll just have to wait and see when we get to watch the episode on Friday. Moving away, we've got a look again, once more, at uh, Green and uh, Moraine. Now, I think this is in a different portion of the episode, once again, having a bit of a talk. And it looks to me this is a sort of different part of... Tarvalon. And I would say just looking at the kind of intricacies and the designs of the uh, building itself, I would say they're now in the White Tower. And maybe this is a sort of walkthrough or introduction for Egreen into the White Tower and they're just showcasing the grounds to her. And this is a particular part of the grounds. Uh, I could be completely wrong on that. That's just the kind of initial feelings I get on this photo. Uh, it also kind of has a feel of maybe a Wisdom's um, home. And so maybe what Egreen did straight away when entering into the uh, Tarvalon is she went and found the local uh, Wisdom for Tarvalon. And of course, that would make a lot more sense of what is in this particular room. And I think maybe the architecture is just kind of the standard designs throughout the whole of Tarvalon that we're going to be seeing and so they look very similar to the uh, of course White Tower. Yeah I am now fully behind that. I would say this is the Wisdom's um, the Wisdom's home in Tarvalon. I think that's really cool of course and to think kind of still there would be in the mindset of who's the best person to go and see to help heal runes? None other than a village wisdom. And in this case, a village, uh, a wisdom in Tarvalon. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. That's one of the nicer photos actually now that I've kind of dissected that down. Uh, once again, this is a photo of Moraine. Not really much to go off of or talk about here. She's just sitting down having a tea, kind of lost in her thoughts. Again, I just love the set. I love everything about Tavalon. I think it's one of the real nicest sets they've designed and created and I just yeah I just love everything about it um and this 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 particular photo and where she's situated has the feel of a more kind of if you want higher up or posher portion of the city and so I think perhaps this is Maybe one of the inns where she has her eyes and ears throughout Tarvalon, where she could be, you know, currently sitting in and kind of contemplating her next move. Right, moving along. Next up, we have a photo of the Waygate and Moraine at it. Now, really, there's not a lot to say about this. We've seen multiple photos and kind of very brief glimpses and uh, videos of the Waygate and Moraine there. So I'm not going to linger very much more on these two photos of Moraine and the Waygate, other than to say, I would say this is most likely towards the back end of the episode, if not the very end, where she, if we remember correctly, and I'm now guessing once again, in that kind of exclusive teaser I put out two days ago, where she says something. I think this kind of could be the speech she would give them as they are about to kind of journey along into the final you know, section of this season. And so she's letting them know, you know, this particular part of the journey that they're on will most likely change them even more than what they've already been through, you know, prior to this. Because of course, a lot is yet to come now. So I've saved these final three because for one, we've seen the whole clip. 
It's a photo of her going on his knees before the ambulance seat. A photo of Shuan Sanche in her kind of um, seat in the, the hall of the tower. And then a photo of Leandrin once again, I would say, speaking to Maureen from the earlier teaser today that we got. So yeah, I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on them because I think they're self-explanatory and we've seen the scenes in question already. So I don't need to give you all kind of a lowdown of what I believe is going on in them. So yeah, I'm going to end the video here, guys. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed it. It's been quite a long one, but I love dissecting these still images with you. So once again, thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video. If you're new around here, subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have any kind of comments on the stills and images we've seen in this episode six promo photos, let me know in the comments section down below. All right, guys, thank you all for watching once again, and I will catch you all much likely later this week around Friday slash Saturday to go over episode six. Catch you then.